Yay! What on Shani? Shana the story, Avanewis e am Gaira Uthnos, you plan Higion. Hi, I'm Shan, love the story, I work in Sick Dragons. Hi, pal. Um, I was inspired by Alicia of Alicia Reads to join in on the Fuckathon. The Fuckathon is a um, readathon or like reading challenge um, taking place throughout July to sort of. Um, put your fist up to the system in general by reading books. Um, it's created by uh, Noria of Noria Reads. Thanks, Noria. Um, the challenges are really good. Um, so I will go through the list. I have I started it already, obviously, so there's a couple of books which I've read. Um, so the first prompt is Fuck Ableism. Read a book with a main character with visible or invisible disabilities. For this one, I chose... Uh, Brother and Sister by Diane Keaton um, and I read this one already now so this is Diane Keaton's uh, kind of memoir of uh, a biography of her brother oh. sort of in, suffered from sort of um, alcoholism um, he has sort of various sort of social phobias he um, was um, described as being kind of a schizoid personality um, so yeah um, he also has um, later on in life suffered from I think like Parkinson's and um, not outside not dementia. dementia. I, so I found it sort of very sort of touching, um, quite sad, and um, I would really recommend it. Although it's sort of very sort of personal, obviously to her and her family, and she really acknowledges the um, the fact that. The, the the fact that the the family was very sort of privileged and you know had money has what is basically was kept Randy alive um, so you know he was able to get a liver transplant quite quickly when he needed it um, she sort of acknowledges that you know had she not if the family had not had the money to support him that he would be sort of destitute probably sort of homeless or sort of dead by now. Um, so this is kind of quite heavy going, but it's very personal. It's told through a lot of um, letters between family members, and it's also because um, Randy, it was a is a poet and has done lots of sort of collage sort of art and stuff like that. That's sort of scattered throughout the book as well. So there's a real sort of connection to him through his poetry, um, and a real insight into his uh, his how his mind works, and also his relationship with his father, which I think seems to be sort of a lot of the crux of at least how he sees why he is how he is and this real sort of um, aversion to sort of living up to those sort of masculine um, quite sort of cold ideas that his father wanted him to sort of you know go into business with him and um, those ideas of like being a man as well which I think he really suffered from so yeah sort of a, a character which I feel like I have sort of come to know throughout my life actually in different ways different people that I've known and friends that I've had and um, so yeah, I could really understand um, a book about someone with those conditions, um, adult, very sort of close to my own life. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. And that was for the fuck ableism prompt. Ableism. Um, the next uh, prompt is fuck ageism. Read a book that centres a, centers a main character 50 years and older living their best life. I did, and I. This doesn't sort of um, specify the protagonist's age, but judging from his um, situation and experiences from the from the back, um, I'm guessing he's fifty plus. 
But anyway, um, the book I've chosen for this prompt is uh, Down the River Unto the Sea by Walter Mosley. Um, I'm a big fan of Walter Mosley. I've read quite a few of his books. Um, this is a standalone novel because he has sort of various sort of private eye kind of series and things like that that are ongoing. Um, but yeah, so this one um, I picked up because uh, one of the reviews on the back says it's all the more relevant in the Black Lives Matter era. Um, so this is a book that he wrote in not that long ago, 2018 this came out. And I think it won sort of some awards at the time. But it's about a uh, joking Oliver was one of the NYPD's finest investigators until dispatched to arrest a well-heeled car thief he is framed for assault, which I said lands him in a notorious Rikers Island prison. A decade later, he's a private detective running his agency with the help of his teenage daughter. Um, and there's like a whole case that sort of comes out of that. So, yeah, um, I'm really just really interested to read another Walter Mosley, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I kind of feel that this is going to be quite a relevant book at the moment. Uh, I think that the protagonist is going to be, yeah, sort of an older character at least. So, all right, that one. Um, fuck capitalism. Read a book with main characters that try to subvert trick, swindle, survive, or make the best of a capitalist system. I'm going to read um, Point Blank by Richard Stark, uh, which I may or may not have seen the movie of with Lee Marvin, but um, this is the first book in the Parker series, uh, who it describes is a master thief with a heart of steel. Um, I don't know a huge amount about this book, but I do have the second book as well because I was kind of quite drawn to this series a while ago and I bought the first two um, and then I didn't read them. So, yeah, he's obviously, you know, using the system and fucking capitalism with, um, with being a thief and uh, it's the ultimate professional thief, it says on here. Um, yeah, I like the idea of those kind of cold-hearted sort of um, protagonists that are kind of a little bit dodgy you, you don't really like them but you're kind of drawn to their story um and yeah i've heard really good things about richard stark and this series in particular so point blank capitalism uh, fuck white supremacy is the next one um for that this is just my current read at the moment um i'm reading uh, the meaning of freedom by angela wyatt davis um i have just started this this morning um, and I've already read quite a, a bit of it. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It seems to be uh, a collection of um, talks that she gave um, throughout, well, at the moment, throughout the 90s. It goes into sort of past like 9-11 and things like that. Um, talks that she gave to, you know, like universities and colleges. Um, it sort of focuses on race and incarceration in the US, um, about the abolition of uh, the prison industrial complex. Um, and everything she says is scarily still, if not more, relevant than the time she gave these talks. Um, I'm really enjoying her voice. Um, everything she says makes a lot of sense. It's um, really eye-opening. Um, she's talking about how the, basically the system creates the, the issues that lead to, to crime much of the time, and then it punishes those crimes um, that it's created itself. Um, and how the prison system, you know, kind of was additionally um, created to uh, as a sort of a humane alternative to capital punishment, and and how capital punishment at this at least at the time that these talks were given was on the rise um, as kind of a a really strange occurrence that would happen then alongside the prison system, and it's basically how the whole thing is an industry that is making money and sort of. Um, this kind of vicious circle um it's also about the treatment of prisoners and the uh, especially um she sort of talks about the sexual abuse that goes on with, within women's prisons and things like that it's just a really good read um, and this is a book that sean bought she thinks many years ago on one of her early trips to san francisco and it's uh, published by city lights and she probably got it from city lights do you think, I think so. yeah downstairs downstairs <laughs> um so yeah that's for Fuck white privilege. Um, no, white supremacy, sorry. 
Fuck yep. theological fundamentalism slash religious intolerance. Read a book with a main character who practices a religion separate from yours. That pretty much include any religion. But um, this is another of Sean's books that looks great. And this is called Pure by Linda K. Klein. Um, inside the evangelical movement that shamed a generation of young women and how I broke free. So this is Klein's memoir. It's sort of set in the 90s purity movement. Um, white evangelical Christianity culture, uh, purity rings, purity pledges, purity bulls, and kind of how dangerous those messages were for young women. Um, it's also about how she um, developed like PS uh, PTSD sort of symptoms um, and sexual dysfunction, and it says bizarre coping mechanisms as a result of her experience within this kind of culture. I'm kind of, um, fascinated in that whole kind of uh, brainwashing anti-sexuality kind of um, aspect of white Christianity um, and I think I'll learn a lot about it through this. And thank you Shani. You're welcome Becky. Next up, what? fuck book elitism. Read the trashiest, cheesiest, most tropey book on your shelf. I had so much to choose from for this prompt and I'm not sure if I have picked the necessarily the tra trashiest, cheesiest book but, uh, so, uh, but the, the cover does indicate that I'm not going to be far off. Um, so I have picked Last Froze by Alexis Lykiard. Now, it's, it's a great cover for starters. I have read previous Alexis Lykiards and enjoyed them. And like I've read his sort of late 60s ones. This is a 70s one. Um, and it has the great tagline at the back. You can see that. Uh, pleasure, pain, pleasure, pain, pleasure, murder. So this is uh, like a murder thriller, it says, about a novel of strange sex and dark desires. I think it's going to be so incredibly dated, um, but I'm quite excited about that as well. Um, this is a novel that will bring you face to face with the kind of killer for whom society saves its harshest condemnation. So I mean, it could link to Angela Davis in a way, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've gone for for that prompt. Uh, pretty exciting, I think you'll agree. Next up. Fuck gentrification. Read a book with characters who are fighting or dealing with uh, the gentrification of their communities. So I have read a book for this one already. Um, I finished this one yesterday and I read Splitsville by Howard Ackler. This is set in 1971 in Toronto and it's uh, a, a novel, it's fiction, but it's based on the... Uh, they were planning on building this huge expressway across the city in the early 70s called the Spadina, High, uh, Spadina Expressway, I think. And um, it's about the how the community kind of rose up against this and it was um, stopped. Um, it's centred around a character called House Sachs, who's like his sort of owner of a used bookshop, like a secondhand bookshop that's kind of, you know, like sales are dwindling. Um, he's a uh, sort of older Jewish man there's lots of references to, to Jewish culture and food throughout which I really liked and he has this sort of brief fling relationship with a, with a slightly younger school teacher who is an activist so she's kind of really sort of actively um, working against the building of this expressway I didn't love this novel I, I felt it was um, like overwritten um, and I don't think it ne necessarily sort of really hammered the points home at all. So I didn't get a real sense of the relationship between the characters or the kind of um, this, that sort of outrage against the gentrification or the damage that this um, expressway would have caused in the community. And I would have liked a bit more of that sense coming from the book. So what, what I came away from the book was the kind of clever wordplay and the use of words which I didn't know what they meant. Um, which I also didn't look up to see what they meant because I couldn't really be bothered. I'd say it's not well written, um, but I don't. Th I don't think the style, or the ex experimental style, served the purposes necessarily of the book. Um, so yeah, obviously this was um, not an event in history that I was aware of, and I think like anyone that maybe is aware of it or interested in that, or sort of you know lives in Toronto or wants a little insight into that aspect of the history of Toronto, then. I would definitely recommend it, but um, yeah, wasn't my cup of uh, char. Um, next up, book slut shaming. 
Read a book with a character who loves to have sex and is utterly unap unapologetic about it. Um, for this, I think this is the last the last prompt. For this, I've chosen. Okay, so I have changed my mind on that particular prompt. So this is Sunday Vert jumping in um, with a alternative book because I remembered this while we were out on our walk this morning. I was like, oh, that'd be perfect for the <coughs> book slack shaming prompt. And this book is uh, a book that I've had for ages. It's the Little Black Book of Griselidis Real, um, Days and Nights of an Anarchist Whore. This is translated by Ariana Rhines, which I had no idea until I just picked this up again now, who's, you know, one of my favourite poets. It's on semiotext. And basically, this is um, uh, a volume which in includes dialogues from between 1979 and 1981. Um, Griselidis Real... Um, was a self, um, proclaimed. self, self proclaimed. Pro, so was a self proclaimed <laughs> um, revolutionary whore um, who basically fought for um, prostitutes' rights, sex workers' rights, um, took part in like the um, prostitute revolution in Paris, um, and. Uh, she she uh, used applied the anarcho Marxist dictum from each according to his abilities to each according to his needs to her profession, charging sliding scales, sliding scale fees determined by her clients' incomes and the complexity of their sexual tastes. She became a militant champion of sexual freedom and prostitute rights, uh, which she described prostitution as an art and a humanist science. Um, she sounds fascinating. Sounds great. Yeah, she wrote um, poetry, um, did art. She also really fought against the concept of um, prostitution as um, something that people were forced into by pimps and things like that and she also it was a profession she chose to partake in um yeah this looks great um and like i said i've had it for years um it was good that i remembered it this morning and yeah i'm gonna include that one and get rid of the emily Witt one for now that can go back on the pile um but yeah Last thing is fuck with yourself. Do something utterly selfish for yourself. Um, I mean, I'm pretty consistently selfish. Um, so I wouldn't know where to begin with that. I will guarantee you that I have an extra selfish weekend. And that's that's all I've got to say about that. Um, hi. Um, I was just going to... There's just a few books that I've got and a little bit of current reads as well. Um, we've just been out for a walk, so I'm feeling a tiny bit windswept, <laughs> wet and warm. Hang on. So just a couple of books that I've got that you may have partly seen, because I mentioned this one um, as a, a potential reading rush book. But this is Skill in Action by Michelle Cassandra Johnson. It's radicalising a yoga practice to create a just world. Um, I'm really interested in, and she's a, a black woman writing this, because I'm really interested in um, yoga and how, what we can do in yoga around how it's kind of quite, it's all quite white. And there's always, there's been like discussions on kind of um, whether yoga is like culture appropriating or, you know, how yoga needs to be decolonized and all of those things. There's not loads of books, but there's this one. And then I have got another one which I've ordered, which hasn't um, arrived yet. Because I'm warm, I'm kind of steaming up. Oh gosh, <laughs> steamy windows. Yeah, I also got um, White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, and since buying it, I've kind of regretted buying it <laughs> because I guess I mean I wasn't sure about it anyway. Um, but it's a white woman talking about how you can not be racist. So I think it probably does have a lots of good things to say, but I feel a bit uncomfortable about buying um it i guess anyway I'll, I'll see how it is and maybe it's um I can take the glasses off the glasses better off. than i thought uh Rob, robin d'angelo does do the intro to this though which is me and white supremacy by layla f sad and um yeah this one looks a bit more interesting than that one um this one actually work bought me thank you work uh to kind of read from at home because i work in a, a an art gallery as well as uh teaching yoga and this is called the whole picture by alice proctor the colonial story of art in our museums and why we need to talk about it and it's a discussion that's kind of happening in our museum at the moment because we've got lots of historic art that is like quite problematic and, and we're looking at ways to kind of 
how we address that. Um, again, in a kind of, not sure, I think Alice Proctor is a white woman, um, just so, so, you, so you know. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a really important kind of topic. Um, I've read a couple of books as well. So I read We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Barry, which I thought was young adult, but it's not. It's just adult. And it's um, set in the 80s. And it's about this group of uh, teenagers who are in a hockey team. And then they start kind of using magic to win their games. Um, and they kind of sign their names into... It's almost like signing a name to the Devil's Book, except the Devil's Book is a notebook with a picture of Emilio Estevez on the cover. Because it's set in the 80s. I didn't say that bit. Um, so it's got kind of 80s references. I felt like I was going to really love it, but I found it a little bit of a slog. So it's quite long. It felt a little bit repetitive in terms of we're going to a lot of hockey games. Um, I I also liked it. Though I thought the writing was good and I would read other books by her. And I, the 80s references, you know I liked um, uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism. So it, it has that a tiny bit like that as well but the 80s references are much more subtle in this one and less kind of campy than my best friend's exorcism so i did really enjoy those there was things i enjoyed about it um but ultimately it ended up being a three star so it's like yeah just a little bit disappointed it's sad i know i thought it was going to be amazing and i feel like it might be amazing for people for yeah. some people don't want to put you off if you're kind of drawn to it maybe give it a go um Oh, the other thing I was going to say about it was that um, I found there was too many characters in there for me to ever fully work out who was who. So it's pretty much the whole hockey team. So there's loads of different girls. Um, you hear about their background stories and stuff, but I never got them clear in my head. And I think that was part of it as well. And I've seen other people say the same. I finished The End by Carl over Knauskart. I've now finished the whole series. This is volume six of my struggle. Um, so I'm very proud of myself. This was like massive. It was like 1,100 and something pages. Um, it was so good. And then it also had the Hitler bit. So like three quarters of the way through, he then goes on for 400 pages about Hitler. Although if it was just about Hitler, I feel it would have been better because it's about Hitler and then you kind of drift off into Paul Salan. And then you go into um, Cain and Abel, and then somehow you're with Ulysses or Stefan Zweig. And I don't know how we got there, and I don't know what it was for. I don't know why we were talking about Hitler, other than the My Struggle, My Camp thing. But I just didn't get it, Bobby. No. I didn't get it. And I had to really force myself through those Hitler sections, while also then watching videos about Hitler doing speeches. Um but the ending was so lovely as well. So, the, you know, he's slow He, in a good way. He talks, there's a lot about drinking coffee in his vacuum um, thermos thing, which I, I never quite understood his thermos thing either, if anyone knows about that. So he seemed to make coffee in his thermos in the house, but I didn't, yeah, anyway. And then he sit in the balcony and smoke. There's lots about his kids. Um, at the end, there's, there's the last kind of hundred pages of, really great and the last paragraph's amazing so it's about his wife Linda and Linda's mental health which isn't great and she ends up in a um in hospital for a while and there's a bit in there where he is his Linda's in hospital it's his daughter's birthday he's promised his daughter he's going to decorate her room for his birthday and it's like a lot going on and he goes out to buy the paint and he comes back and he's there painting the walls while crying which I just felt really was the saddest thing <laughs> The saddest thing for me. Mm. I think that bit's going to stick with me. It was amazing. It's an amazing series, but Lord knows why he talked about Hitler. I've started reading The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm um, reading this with Daniela. Um, I'm not far in, but especially after these two, <laughs> what a pleasure. It just feels like really so easy to read. Sorry, Bertie. So mm. well written. Um, it feels quite traditional storytelling in a way, um, but I'm really enjoying it. So that's what's happening today. I've also got the new Happiness magazine. It's a bit sticky. But I've got the new Happiness magazine, plus I've got the Guardian. I feel cool enough to put my glasses Yay. back on. Something sticky somewhere, Bobby. I don't know. Bye.
So Sunday Shan is also coming back to say that um, I've read this one, which is Skill in Action, Michelle Cassandra Johnson. Um, I've put on my watch later a few videos that she's done. I think she's in a TED talk, but I haven't watched them yet. But if they're good, I'll um, include them. I really like this. I thought it was like a... I've tagged a few bits as well. There's stuff about spiritual bypassing, which I found really um, good. It sort of says spiritual bypassing perpetuates the idea that the belief we are one, which is a kind of thing I guess you get a lot in yoga or spiritual spirituality, is enough to create a reality where we are treated equally and as one. It is not. Spiritual bypassing permits the status quo to stay in place and teaches people that if you believe in something and you have good intent, that is enough. It is not. So, yeah, it's really, it says really good stuff. It's only a small book, but it says really good stuff. Um, and if you teach yoga, I'd say that it's essential. And if you kind of go to yoga, it'd be really good as well. Um, yeah, and she talks about how important yoga is. She just talk to her and to lots of people. And she talks about the kind of decolonizing of it and also the um, uh, cultural appropriation as well. And about, I guess, doing trying to teach it authentically and teaching it from yourself as well does that make sense yeah and then um i've been reading uh, the brit bennett as well which i'm really enjoying so i've just read like, another couple of chapters and then i've also started afropean by johnny pitts notes from a black europe and i thought i'd read that alongside the brit bennett i haven't read very much but it kind of um it's johnny pitt going around europe and writing about um what he sees there He's from Sheffield in the UK, um, and also he looks, you can't really see, but he looks super cute. It's so cool, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Oh, have we got it? Yeah, we got it. <laughs> um, on the back, it's blurbed by Owen Jones, but Bernadine Everisto and Afro Hirsch. So, yeah. And he's kind of talking about claiming the word Afropean, which is a good word. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm at. Well done, Jen. Or painted my nails. Hmm. <laughs>